Roy Fudge with Shoreline Marine Products. I've been a certified marine mechanic for over 25 years and I'm here today as Captain Weekend. Today I'm going to share a variety of easy boating projects that you can do yourself with the common tools that you've probably got in your toolbox right now. I'll be by your side every step of the way and together we'll install a variety of top quality Shoreline Marine Products to get you back on the water faster. So let's get going. Grab your tools and I'll share my tips and tricks so you can easily install those new hot shoreline accessory and replacement parts and be your own Captain Weekend. Loy, Captain Weekend with Shoreline Marine. Neighbor was backing his boat into the garage last night, got a little close to the wall, busted the light out, so we got to replace it. Going to upgrade him up to an LED light. If you notice, these lights are on poles. Down in Florida with the salt water, we like to get our lights up out so we don't have to back into the salt water with our lights on, keep our corrosion down, make our lights last a little bit longer. Tools and other parts you're going to need to replace your trailer lights. Gonna need a heat gun if you're using the heat shrink buck connectors. Uh, if you're using standard buck connectors, you don't need the heat gun. Gonna need wire strippers, crimpers. Gonna need a 10 millimeter and a 7 16 either in wrenches or a socket and elect liquid electric tape. I prefer using the heat shrink connectors as opposed to the regular connectors because they're sealed a little bit better. Down in Florida with the salt water corrosion. Uh, the heat shrink seems to last a lot longer than what the normal ones do. I always go behind everything and put electrical tape uh, on my connections. I use the liquid kind, that way it doesn't get slimy. It gives it a nice, uh, nice sealed connection and don't have to worry about corrosion as much. First thing we're going to do, we're going to cut the wires. And then this light uses a 7 16 wrench to undo the nuts that hold it on. Pull your nuts off, and then your light will pop right off. Now with these poles, we've got a wire here that has a chance of sliding back down in there. So I'll take a tie wrap, just loosen it around the lights, pull it good and snug, then I don't have to worry about my wires falling back down the poles as I'm getting all my other stuff ready to go. All right. get our lights out of the packaging. You'll notice we've got a green wire, yellow wire, our brown wires and our white wire is our, our ground. Yellow wire goes on the left side of the trailer. The green wire goes on the right hand side of the trailer. We've got a new license plate bracket also. Kind of straighten our wires out a little bit, get them out of our way. Pull the nuts off and the washers. Put our bracket on. flat washer first, then your lock washer, then a nut, then we're going to take our white ground wire which has a terminal eye on it, going to put it on the remaining stud, again flat washer first, lock washer and a nut and then we're ready to snug it up. Now these instead of the 7 16 the new lights are using a 10 millimeter bolt and nut so I'll have to grab my 10 millimeter wrench. Ready to hook our the rest of our electric up now. We need some li liquid electric tape 
either heat shrink buck connectors or regular buck connectors, of course a crimper and a wire stripper or a knife, however you want to do that. Wire stripper is a lot safer, you don't have to worry about cutting yourself with a wire stripper. Um, I, like to, I personally like to use a uh, heat shrink buck connector and then coat it with the liquid electric tape just to ensure that I don't have any corrosion problems down the road. First thing we're going to do, strip our wires back. Give them a little twist, keep all of the threads in a nice neat little line. And we're ready to go to our butt connectors. Pink is the right size for this. Slide our wire in. Give it a good crimp. A little tug, make sure it's tight. Okay, we got these on good. Bring it back behind there. Make sure we're going yellow to yellow. And brown to brown. Now we've got to heat shrink our butt connectors, take a heat gun, Make sure it's good and shrunk down. You'll see a little gel ooze out of the end of it, which is a sealant. We'll let those cool down a little bit. Get this one all the way down. Let them cool down a little bit, and then we'll be ready to put our electric tape on, our liquid electric tape onto the ends of the connectors to make sure they're good and sealed. All right, we're time for our liquid electric tape. What we want to do with this, definitely coat the ends pretty good. Make sure we got a good seal on those. And then also where we crimped them at, I like to put a little bit extra on there just in case we accidentally punch through the insulation with our crimpers. Looks good. Now we're ready to test our light. Checking our lights out, you can do it a couple of different ways. I've got a battery hooked up to the front with just a little pigtail that I put battery terminals on so I can just clamp right onto the battery with the different wires and make sure all my lights are working. You can hook it to your truck, do the same thing. Make sure you check your blinkers and your, your running lights. As you can see, these are working fine. Gonna go replace the other one now and then we'll be ready to go back to the water.